You know, we talked about uh, that sense of creating environments, tribalism, and yet all we ever keep talking about is how we need to treat each other like humans. Boy, I hope everyone has been waking up to realize we've got a lot of work to do. And I should start that way, Kawana, because were you treated as a human or a patient? I was absolutely treated as a patient. I, as an African-American woman, uh, an undergrad and um, an adolescent and young adult, those three things should have been taken into consideration um, pre-treatment, during treatment, post-treatment. Unfortunately, they were not. The fact that I'm an African-American woman in my youth with a cancer that is typically restricted to Ashtana Jewish white women in their 40s. No one considered to look at this African-American girl who has no bit of Jewish blood in her system and say, that anomaly, something wrong with that. Let's look into that a little more. No, I was treated as a standard cancer patient. You're young, we can hit you and blast you with a crap load of chemotherapy. And once you're done, you'll be fine. That's how I was treated. <sighs> My goodness. Kwana, were you ever included in your treatment plan, either pre or post? No, for lack of a better word, no. Um, I was essentially told, this is what your treatment is going to be. This is what your regiment will be. And once you're done, we take the pick line out and you go home. It was, you had this cancer, we can catch it. We're going to catch it. And this is how, flat, nothing more, nothing less. I wasn't asked anything, I was told everything. Now, let's be clear, and this is no shade, I'm not, you know, so super pro-black that I don't recognize that there are some, you know, diversity pieces to this that were not completely ignored, but uh, considering the historical mess that comes with being African-American and um, the historical context of African-Americans having a higher pain threshold than other races, um, I'm going to assume very safely that at some point or another, someone looked at me, someone looked at this skin and said, oh, she's all right, she can take it. Kwana, were you um, offered any med mental uh, health services? It, I was not offered anything. Uh, my pick line was taken out, it was May 13th, 2006, was the day after I was supposed to graduate from Fisk University, which was uh, trauma all in itself. Um, and I was sent home. I was having the same processing of anxiety, processing of depression, possible PTSD, the same thing that Kayla was struggling through, but no one um, at that uh, at the administrative level or not even at the medical uh, level said, you may need to go speak to somebody about this. When I found out about Gilda's Club, when I found out about Bright Pink, when I found out about Kayla, I found that out through a Google search on my own. So what clinical mental health I earned or I received were things that I pursued on my own outside of becoming a mental health clinician to kind of, you know, offset a lot of what I had to struggle with alone. I love the passion. You just keep delivering it because we need people to listen and we need to get people to act and we need to not fear failure. We have to have the courage to see the opportunity. And that's what you're presenting to us today.